Okay, well, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that I've been working on these generator instruments. Generator instruments such as this one that normally make a sound when you bow the two wheels, but this one is turned off so as not to disturb my neighbor at this late hour. This is the same thing I've been building over the last couple weeks, except it is turned on. It's just very quiet because it's only one quarter of a full system right now. So the speaker is over there and there's a bunch more of the electronics that I want to get into at some point, but I've been so busy just getting this far. This is what I'm most excited about though. This is an electrical snapshot of the generator and the amplifier and the rectifier capacitors all working at the same time. This is what it looks like when you bow it three consecutive times. So if you follow the plastic spork, this is the first bow, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. You can see for each bow, each time you so-called strum the instrument, the purple gets larger and it gets faster. This is the current coming out of the stepper motor and charging up the battery. Sorry, did I say battery? I meant capacitors. And that is this black signal here. So it starts off not quite at zero, but we'll get into that another time. It gets filled up by the generator as the generator goes faster and makes a higher voltage and we can also see the blue here the blue is the speaker output the speaker output begins almost immediately as soon as the player begins bowing there's very quickly a current there we could even zoom in and measure that later and the amplitude or the volume of the speaker reaches its peak just before the player stops the bowing action. Once they stop the bowing, the voltage is at its peak and only decays from there. And notice how the amplitude of the, of the speaker, the current going into it, diminishes. This is very, very exciting to finally see after dreaming about this for a very long time. I've been visualizing this in my head and thinking about the different sounds I'm going to be able to make now that I have all these uh, available as parameters. For example, if you look at the purple signal here, that's the player bowing the instrument. That's a great time to introduce sounds like actual bowing noise on a cello or plucking noise on a guitar. We don't have to stop there either. We could also use the overall voltage as a parameter. And then we could also use the current into the motor, the green signal, uh, to drive something else like a filter cutoff or a pulse width duty cycle or something like an effect, like a distortion. There are just numerous possibilities. And that's really only the beginning. What I'm foreseeing for the next Pyramid Eel, that's Pyramid Eel 2, is going to be complete usage of these parameters to represent the physical system that's taking place. So we don't have to just use the pure electrical signals such as current. We can surmise things such as how fast the wheel is moving or how hard the person is actually pushing once we've estimated the friction and modeled several other things out of the system. So what I'm saying is that in addition to these four parameters, we can generate many more expressive parameters. Not many more, maybe like four more. Realistically speaking, you know, we only have so many sensors and there's a lot of redundant information in these. But that's a story for another time. All right, thanks for watching. If you're mystified what this is all about, then please go back to the homepage of this channel and start watching videos there. Thank you.